Hello, I am Patrick, Patrick Bitaturi. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about agriculture. Why? Because nearly 77% of the population in Uganda is involved directly or indirectly in agriculture. And I get so many questions from the youth in particular because they are being pushed into the area of agriculture and they don't fully understand it and they are not sure if it will change their fortunes. Well, I've had to take a closer look at agriculture. I am probably on record saying agriculture is not a very attractive area to invest in, but I've had to relook at it closely and think about it as business, as a business, as an enterprise. Agribusiness is good, but they can't be agribusiness without somebody farming. So there's got to be product produced and delivered to the farm gate. And then from farm gate, agribusiness, the value addition. That's where the real wealth is created. But they cannot be real wealth without the foundation. So some people have got to be in agriculture. Largely, the government has done a very good job, led by the president with his Operation Wealth Creation that is going around the country, nearly to every district, explaining Operation Wealth Creation. It's a fantastic idea. I genuinely believe he means well for this country, more than anybody else. Of course, it has unfortunately been tainted with politics. He is a political animal, he's a president, and he has to campaign. So the color yellow appears all the time around this activity. But the message is very clear. His message of the four-acre farm will actually reduce poverty. It will lift so many people out of poverty, because many homesteads do have the land. 4 acres, 10 acres, 20 acres, but there is nothing coming out of it. Especially in the north where this land is communal land and it is massive and it is beautiful and it is virgin, it is flat, it can be mechanized. When I went there, I was blown away. So I think there is so much potential for this country to refocus on agriculture if the, the sensitizing, the awareness is made and the cohesion with collaboration comes together. Because there's no point in somebody doing something and it stops there. It never connects with the other moving parts. Think of it as a picture. We are painting a big picture. And we need to get all the pieces like a jigsaw puzzle of this picture. Then it works. But the way we are doing it, it is so fragmented. There are very few winners and there are so many losers. So, how do we go about this for the youth especially? I encourage you to study. There is nothing like research. There is so much information out there. On the internet, in YouTube, if you don't want to read, just listen to the videos. There is so much information that it's mind-boggling, probably too much information. So choose a narrow area and then do your research, understand it. If you want to do something to do with apiary or bee, bee, bees and honey, focus on that area. If you want to do nuts, just do groundnuts or cashew nuts or macadamia, focus on the area. If you want to do avocado, avocado, do avocado and do it well. Understand what type of avocado, of avocado is available, what type of seeds, there are three or four types of avocado that are really popular. And now that China has opened up a huge market where they want our avocado from Africa, because everyone out there is thinking about their health. And avocado is one of the products that is very nutritious, has got very good oils, it doesn't cause cholesterol, so it's on such high demand. In Europe, they've been exporting this for a long time. And South Africa has almost had a monopoly. The whole of Africa where we could grow avocados are fast asleep. So we need to change our thinking about what we do. High value crops, vegetables, um, lettuce, kale, French beans, onions, tomatoes, different types of tomatoes, Italian tomatoes, sweet tomatoes, for salad. These specialty areas, some in greenhouses, some you don't have to have greenhouses. So all these things can be done and the capital is not so much. But they can't be done as standalones. Everybody keeping his little secret in his armpit. We need a central coordinating organization. And the government has been trying to play a role, but they are so caught up with the bottom of the pyramid that the guys in the middle, the youth who want to do something that is in vogue, that is profitable, that they see tangible results within three months, six months, and clean money coming in, that's not going to happen. Then you have the middlemen who have always been creaming, buying all these products from people at a very low price. Buying an avocado from somebody at the farm gate price of something like 300 shillings. That will never transform the farmer's life. Just because the tree happened to be in his, in his home, in his compound, he can sell you an avocado at 300 shillings. But for a farmer who's doing it as a business, will not accept that. One avocado goes for $3 when it's out there. 
Now, cost of taking it there is not more than, a, I don't know, 50 cents. So, who's taking all this margin? They are killing the youth. So we need to break all these barriers and open up this space so that people who are involved in agribusiness are actually successful. After two years, three years, they've bought a car, a four by four. Five years, they've bought a house, it's fully paid for. They've expanded their business. They've got a family. You can make a life around an agribusiness, but you've got to cut out these middlemen, do your research, understand it. We have so many young people graduating. Being a graduate, the tools you have when you come out of university cannot help you in business, but it shows that you can learn quickly. You've now got the general foundation right. So you need now to start specializing in an area. If it's agriculture you're going into, agribusiness you're getting into, then focus, do your research, write it down, make a business plan, have a clear roadmap with clear milestones, what you must do first. They're like steps. You can't just jump to the top. And then you see how you'll get there. It may take you two years, it may take you three years, it may take you five years. It took you three years to get a degree. You've been unemployed for three years, which means now you've got a degree in unemployment. So how do we change that? Focus on a particular area and let's get this country moving. I see so much opportunity. The rest of the world is crying global warming. What, in Europe they are scorched. In, in Asia the floods are killing them. Here, yes, we're feeling global warming. So the rains have delayed, but largely God has blessed us. People in the north who planted maize are making a great harvest. Those who planted cassava, great harvest. Those who planted soya bean, great harvest. Are we going to wait for foreign investors to come and start tilling our soils? No, we've got to wake up and seize this opportunity. There is a chance that we can be the breadbasket for the region and export globally if we get our house in order. In South Africa, the things they are doing are amazing. Why? Just because they're organized. Organization is key. Order, structure. Order, structure. We need to have order, structure. You need to have order, structure in your lives if you're going to succeed. And that's the biggest thing that differentiates us from the rest of the world. The absence of order and structure here. This madness we have of border borders ruling and anybody saying what they want and everyone throwing bottles at judges and at the president and abusing people, that is madness. We cannot live like that. We will not transform our society. I appeal to you, especially the youth, take responsibility for your life. Your destiny is in your hands, nobody else's. And you can change in a few years where you stand, where you want to be. Thank you.